Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Thank you for press and play. For coming to this place to, yes, talk about how possibly God's been speaking to all of us for a long time. Like right in our face, too. Like right in our face. It's like, you know, the way God speaks, it's, it's, um, you get these impressions, these ideas, and you don't really know, you don't really know if what you are saying may come to be, but then when things happen and you look back and you're, you're prompted by memory to remember, hey, remember you had that dream and you told everybody about the dream? Hey, remember you just did a show about Sodom and Gomorrah on May 1st? About the twin wicked cities, the twin cities? And you talked about how the day that Christ appears, it's as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the twin cities. people with everything that's going on in the world that started at the Twin Cities it's time that we all take a moment and just say maybe maybe there's more to the story maybe there's gonna be an end to this madness I've been talking on the channel a lot about the plagues of Egypt I've been doing these shows which seem a little bit at the time probably a little bit peculiar but now where we are right now when you look back and that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna look back because that's how God, uh, that's how God reminded me that he's in charge and everything's going according to plan and that I shouldn't be too worried, right? This is going to be a message of hope. I got a little worried about it. I'm not going to be worried about it anymore because right now God is working. God is speaking loud and clear. And if you're not listening, then you haven't been paying attention and you're probably going to be lost at sea. But if you are listening and you are seeking the truth no matter what the cost and you do see God's hand in all of this, which you can't, I can't imagine you getting through this show and not seeing God in action and not being like, you know what? With everything that's going on for the first time in my life, I feel like maybe there is a God. Maybe I do have hope. Maybe with all the madness that's going on, maybe it's because, you know, well, Jacob, Jacob's been saying this stuff was going to happen. Jacob's been saying these things were going to happen. I didn't know it. But looking back, whew, this is going to be one heck of a show. Because the three days of darkness that I said was the next plague to come. Well, it turns out it looks like it's already here. So, buckle up, people. Welcome back to the program. Today, I may not be as goofy as I usually am. No, I probably will still be goofy. That's, I mean, let's be real, right? Let's be real. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, is it? After I uploaded the video about Noah's Ark and the rainbow and the covenant, God's everlasting covenant with all of us, things continue to, uh, you know, get a little, get a little interesting. And uh, the plot thickens, as they say. And the plot has thickened. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, I've done a bunch of shows recently and probably with over, over the last year or so, like about a year ago, I did a, I did a show where I explained what the three days of darkness is. You know, the, uh, the, the thing that was making this round where everybody expects the, you know, the internet to go down and the lights to go out and everything else. Well, I did a whole show about what that darkness was and that it was about ignorance. And, day when people's ignorance drives them to, you know, a, a just, it's, a, it's a day of just such ignorance that it can be felt. That's, that's the way it's described in, in uh, the book of Exodus. So I did a whole show about that about a year or so ago. And then about two months ago, 
uh, two months ago, I did Three Days of Darkness is Next. Now, I totally forgot that I did this program. I totally forgot that I did this program. The only reason why I remember that I did this program, because you know, you do so many things and kind of the way I work here is I do, I do a lot of praying. I do a lot of praying and do a lot of seeking, you know, and, um, and I kind of just go with the, uh, with the flow, you know, kind of go with the flow. It's one of those things where, you know, Jesus prayed, it's not my will, Lord, but yours. It's kind of the same thing here. You know, like before I came on here, I was praying for a long, long period of time because I want to make sure that everything that I'm saying, that, you know, that it's God. I, I mean, I don't want it to be me. I don't want to be making up stories and, and saying things that are wrong and leading people the wrong way. So I, um, I just, I, I felt like I needed to come on here and say something. I just didn't know what it was exactly that I needed to say. And then we, we found out that there was going to be a protest right down the street from us, right? And then, then we heard that there was a car that was on fire right around the corner from where we live. And then we found out that a guy with a shotgun, and it was, it was like one thing after another thing after another thing. And, it, and I, I saw how the fear was starting to kind of rule into my family. So I said, okay, it's time for me to go, to go take a shower, listen to some music, and pray really loud, which is what I do. And I was like, Lord, you gotta tell me that everything's gonna be okay. You gotta tell me, Lord. Because I said, I said things like this, you know, this blackout was coming, these three, this three days of darkness was coming. But I, I reminded everybody that those that you know sought the Lord, that that Israel in that story, they didn't lose the light. They didn't lose the truth. They didn't lose hope. They didn't lose faith. They got through it. But I felt myself starting to, to uh I was I was being pulled. In a lot of different directions and I understand now at this point in time it's like you all depend on me you all depend on me to uh you know, to be an encouragement to you and I'm grateful that I'm given that ability but at the time I wasn't feeling too encouraged if you know what I mean So this is the way it works, okay? Yesterday, before I'm taping the show in the morning, Noah comes up to me and he's like, Dad, uh, you know, the uh, there's another nest being built where that other nest was on top of that pillar. Now, if you remember on the channel, right, I had a bunch of birds nests and it was, when, when, when the virus of the crown first hit, it was kind of a, uh, a reminder that every little thing was gonna be all right. There were three little birds, right? I had all these nests. Well, because of the nest, there was like poop everywhere and the pillar was like covered in poop. So this weekend, when I got off of work, I came home, I cut the grass and I cleaned everything. And I went in there and I dug out the, the baby bird nest, right? There were a bunch of robins nests and there was like this baby bird nest. I didn't know what the baby bird was. I'm calling it a baby bird because it was just a little tiny baby bird, little small bird. I didn't know what it was. I didn't look it up. I didn't think about it, but I got rid of the nest. Noah tells me, he tells me, hey, dad, that, that nest is being built again. I said, no way. I just cleaned it on Saturday. How how are they building another nest? Which made me think, I'm like, I hope I didn't like destroy their house. And they're like, they came back to, to lay more eggs and the house was gone. They're like, oh, we gotta build another house again. All right, so this is the pillar. And you'll see the nest that I took away. Building a new nest. But I said, oh yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. I thought it was very, uh, very cool. But I kind of blew it off. Right? Until later that day when I was down in the dumps and I was a little bit worried about everything that was going on and this, you know, all this madness that was supposed to come our way, I just, uh, I opened up my phone and I had this comment. The comment was from Lady Blue. And Lady Blue said, Jacob, God has his eye on the sparrow. Sparrow, I thought. Oh my goodness. And it, like it hit me like a revelation in my chest. It's like, is that the bird? The sparrow? Was there a sparrow's nest there the whole time? I talked about the nests. I even quoted Luke and Matthew. I, I even quoted the Gospels about where, where God was saying, you know, are not the sparrows sold for five, you know, pennies, whatever they're sold for, but not a hair on your head, like a sparrow doesn't fall from the sky without it being in the will of God. You know, how much more value are you than a sparrow? And there's a sparrow's nest. I looked the picture up, it's the bird. I got a sparrow's nest. It was like, okay, good, calm, good. I feel a little better now. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. 
Lord, right? That's an encouragement because see, God speaks to us these ways. He, he, has, he has thoughts for us of uh, peace and power and of a sound mind. And he wants that in our life as well. And we can't do that if the world is feeding us nonstop fear, nonstop hate, nonstop diet, all this nonsense. But if you've been on the channel long enough, you know I said it was coming. I did say it was coming. I just didn't know how obvious what I was saying was going to be. I didn't know, because you never know. That's why you don't make predictions. You just you have this overwhelming feel. You look at I look at the world and I look at all of these things and I say just like the plagues of Egypt, right? We did the locust plagues, the this plague, the, and I explain what the plagues of Egypt are and I say that we're going into it. And I did a video two months ago called Three Days of Darkness is Next." Two months ago, I did this. So I said, "Oh my goodness!" I remember that just a couple of days ago on my YouTube story, I, I sent a prayer out because I wanted the protest to come to an end. And I like, I like hashtagged it, like three days of darkness has come. I didn't put two and two together. But for some reason in that moment, I thought that, you know, because at the time it was like, there was a th it was, we were going into the third day of protest. And I said, the third days of darkness. I said, let, the, let it come to an end, Lord, look. Wanted to share a prayer, because I know that with many of us together, that God answers prayer that if this be three days of darkness, Lord, that you bring it to an end. But I didn't think that I did a show just two months ago about the very same thing. Now, how did I find this out? How did I remember all this? Well, because prayer, more prayer. Okay, Lord, you're giving me some things. What do I need to know now? So I'm praying and praying and praying that I have a memory. I remind myself of a dream that I shared with all of you. Do you remember the dream? It was in that video, believe it or not, which is ironic because the video two months ago, I think it was March 20th, where the plague is next. And it's funny because they're not taking it very seriously. They're scared, but they're not going to like God, right? Every single TV show is about like the devil. It's about like, you know, there's another new witchcraft show and another new witchcraft show. And it's all about all the gods of Egypt. Then here you got a couple of people on uh, maybe on YouTube, a couple people here and there, nobody knows about, but the world's gonna know. That's the amazing thing. That's what I've been saying for a long time, that this is gonna blow up. It's going to, because if, it, if, it's, if it's God's will that people know that uh, it's not the work of man, it's not like I'm so great or any of us are so great, it's just that God is in charge of all of this. And while everybody's telling you to be scared and they're showing footage of like UN trucks and all this stuff, and everybody's talking about the, you know, the word, oh, this is what the purge is about. And oh, this is what that movie, The Hunt is about. Well, everybody's talking about all that stuff. I want you to unplug and unwind and understand that the Lord is your shelter. The Lord is your refuge. That's in control. The, the, this world is corrupt. This, this is all about people humbling themselves and understanding that what you do to other people, you do to yourself. And the people and the powers that be right now, they don't get it. In the video, I talk about how you know, the, the media is manipulating everybody with the purge and the this and the that, all the things that we're talking about and, and, and how it's the world is kind of driving everybody to that. And then I say to everybody, you know what? Things are going to get better, but they're about to get worse. And then I said, because I had a dream last night. I know it sounds a little goofy, but in the dream, there were like all these, it was like all my stuff was looted, right? We were all these empty boxes. Remember when I said all the stuff of value was, was gone? It was only candy was left. But is Pharaoh going to listen? No, I don't think so. That's why they're singing things like Imagine. That's why you're going to start to see even more of this nonsense. Or all you, uh, all you, uh, you know, so-called religious YouTube stations, are you coming on here and you just speaking doom and gloom and everything else and trying to get your, you know, your profit in? Trying to make a little money? You know, get a couple of views with the fear tactics? Or are you ministering to people? Are you telling them about the word of God? Are you sharing the power of the most high and calling those things that are not as if they are so that when they are, the Lord can be revealed and people understand that it's not just the guy on the screen. It's God that's in charge of everything. That's why everything's appearing everywhere. It's to show you the signs are around you. Jesus said, he says, you can discern the weather 
but you can't pay attention to the signs of the sky. I've been paying attention. I'm the guy. I told you at the movie. You don't want to be at a movie with me because I'm going to tell you the end from the beginning. I'm going to say this is what's going to happen. Your life is like a motion picture, people. And right now, it's the summer blockbuster. And it's going to get crazier. And it's going to get better. And it's going to get a lot worse. I had a dream. I know. Another one of those dreams. I, you know, I go outside and there are all these boxes. Right? All these cardboard boxes. They're all open. There are so many boxes. And, um, and then I understood in the dream, it's like, oh, they were food. Like people dropped off food, but they're all open. Like people ravaged the boxes that were placed on my property. And then you think to yourself, well, my goodness, right? Right, everybody was expecting the lights to go out and all that stuff, and maybe that happens, right? Maybe that happens. But really, is that what the is that the darkness that I've been telling everybody about? No, the darkness was the ignorance that was so thick. It was like a blackout, sort of like Tuesday's blackout. Now, how, how do I know about all this? Because my children were telling me all about it yesterday. But not just them, because see, I don't know if I should come on here, because it sounds a little goofy. Hey guys, you really should believe in God, because I really do, and because I've been saying things on the channel for a long time, and they just keep happening, right? They just keep happening, and there's always a message of hope in there. There's always a message of hope in there. And in that video, I had said, I had said, you know, these celebrities, because we have the virus of the crown, we have this terrible plague, which we all, by the way, prayed for, that we prayed that it would go away. Because the plagues of Egypt, what happened in the plagues of Egypt? They, they were like, can you get rid of it? Can you get rid of it? We'll let Israel go. We'll let them pray. We'll let them do that. Can you get rid of it? Well, guess what? Looks like in Italy, looks like in Italy, all right? This would be a beautiful thing. Uh, I am not a doctor, right? I'm not giving any kind of advice. But in Italy, they say that the uh, it's, it's basically is virtually gone. That for whatever reason, the virus, just, I guess it's maybe mutated? And it's not quite as terrible as it once was. Interesting, don't you think? One plague comes, all of a sudden. See, we're going to find out in the next couple of weeks because of all these, you know, terrible things that are going on. With, because everybody's so angry with the corruption that is just everywhere that they're, they're just... Right? And we know that a lot of people that are in charge, that they're orchestrating and all of this, but you know what? This is another plague and it has come and it came to America of all places. The very place that the eclipses came, remember? I've been talking about this for a long time. Said judgment was coming to America. How many videos do I have to do, right? About the, the uh, Babylon the Great, right? We were just talking about Babylon. We're talking about the twin wicked cities. We're talking about the judgment that was to come. And then here, this judgment comes when Gemini, the in, in the astrology sign, right? May, the Gemini, because I'm a Gemini, June 11th, so my birthday is coming up, right? Happy birthday, me, gonna be 49 years old. Not quite a high priest yet. Uh, that'll be in another year. Twin wicked cities though. Duality, twin wicked cities. And then we have the protests starting in the twin cities. Nobody's listening, nobody's listening. All these people, all these people that are, they talk about God, they talk about all this, they're trying to get everybody to say a bunch of words. And they're not bringing anybody to the knowledge of the truth and the stature of Christ, which is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to repent. We're supposed to humble ourselves, which is what I said in that video about the next plague to come, where I said you'd think that everybody's so scared right now, they'd be, that the celebrities and all of them, you know, maybe they take a toll of their life and say, you know what, maybe we should turn to God, right? It's a couple of them did, but they were singing, imagine there's no heaven, remember that? So what happens? Another plague has to come, and here we are. Did a video I shared earlier, right? One woe is here, another two to come, another one's coming, then another one after that. It's in the book of Revelation about the woes to come. It's in Revelation, I think it's chapter 9. I think it's safe to say that we've probably entered the darkest of days in our country. I think it's safe to say we've probably entered the darkest of days in the world. I think it's safe to say that when I did this video innocuously, right, just because I saw things come and I said, well, you know, if we're going according to plan, the next one would be three days of darkness. And then here we are. The White House goes dark for the first time ever. Trump, the 
news is he goes in his bunkers, just like the scriptures say. All these big, hotshot, powerful people, right? They're going to run for cover. They're going to be scared. And here we are, right? Here we are, hitting that like button, subscribing and sharing, hopefully, and not getting turned away from, from the algorithms that are trying to keep people from hearing the truth and turning to the living God, the mighty one of Jacob. This is the moment you've been waiting for, I say it on every show. You need to do it now. I mean, how much more do you need to see, right? How much more do you need to uh, experience? The good news is God cares more about you than he does as a little sparrows. So much so that when I decided that I was going to do this show, I was like, should I do it? What do I get? Chris Faust. Hey, Chris, what's up, man? I, I told you you might be in this show. Uh, he gets, I get, a, um, I get a, uh, a comment. I guess it was last night when I was in prayer about this again, because I'm in prayer. Lately, it's, it's like I'm in prayer all the time. Chris basically wrote me. He said, Jacob, you've been talking about the plagues. So he's paying attention. He says, you know, you've been saying these things are going to happen. He's like, could this be the blackout? Could this be the three days of darkness? Could this plague of darkness be because of the blackouts everywhere? Could this be it? All right, so that's great, Jacob. That's great. Okay, Jacob. That's great, dude. Right? You said all oh, things were going to happen, blah, 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 blah. But every time I said that, I said those that would not partake of Babylon's sins. Right? I said those that would not take part of the sin. You're not going to go out there and you're not going to be violent. You're not going to go out there. You're not going to loot. You're not going to go out there. You're not going to be prejudiced. You're not going to go out there. You're not going to be hateful. You're not going to go out there. You're not going to be greedy. You're not going to go out there. You're not going to be jealous. You're not going to go out there. You're not going to be lustful. You are going to repent. And I said, if you do these things, if you turn to God, you're going to be okay. God's, God's got this sparrow building another nest because me, like the meathead that I am, I took the nest away so that I could be reminded that that's how valuable we are to the Lord. So, you want some good news now? Let's get into the good news. So now everybody's talking about the storms, right? The next big fear thing to be scared of is the terrible storms that are coming. Cristobal being one of them. Now, there's a lot of interesting things happening in the next couple of days. We have like a, uh, we got a lot of Interesting things happening in the month of June, astronomically speaking. Got like seven planets in retrograde. Got like a bunch of eclipses. We got a lot of interesting things. Got a strawberry moon coming. Yep, on uh, June 5th. Full, huge strawberry moon. On June 8th, you're going to see Jupiter. Jupiter, by the way, known as the king planet. And then on the solstice, right? I don't put much stock in that. I know a lot of people do. It's going to be this ring of fire. It's kind of like an eclipse, but it's not quite as big. So you're going to see this ring of fire. Woo! Interesting things. But the big storms, that's what everybody's worried about. You know what the name of the storm is in the uh, in the Gulf right now? Cristobal. Cristobal. It's an interesting name because you know what it means? It means the Christ bearer. The one who bears Christ. Cristobal is heading our way. Which is exactly what would happen during this time and while that's going on because that's something that's pretty amazing to think about because that's what the point of this is right christ in you the body of christ the mind of christ the kingdom of god being established in the world today the spirit of the living god being poured out on all flesh as they talk about in the book of joel where men will have uh, dreams and visions and, and the last trump would be sounded 
which my friend Mary Housley literally sounded on Ellen. My life is filled with such beautiful faith and such miraculous wonder that I just wish some of that could translate and transfer to all of you so that you then, you know, you just have a relationship, you know, because you're, you're, you're missing the point. You've forgotten who you were meant to be. You died. The instant you came into this place, you began to believe yourself to be something you're not. You allowed this beast system to destroy you, to kill you, to ruin you, to ruin you so much that you would hurt somebody for no reason. Well, those days are coming to an end, my friend. This day that we're talking about right now, you know, when, when, uh, when John was told by the angel, I think it was the rainbow around his head. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But when John was told, he said, you know, he's go, go measure. He was going to measure the temple of God. But he goes, you know, those that are out the temple of God, those that are outside, forget about them. Forget about the dogs and the prostitutes and the, and the wicked things. Forget about all of those that are outside of the temple of God. Because God is going to give them over it's going to give it over to the Gentiles so that they can trodden down everything. They can just destroy everything. Everything's going to get destroyed. Forget about them. Don't measure them. Measure only the temple. Measure those that are seeking the truth no matter what the cost. Measure them. And there was given me a reed, like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred threescore days clothed in sackcloth. God promised that as long as you are in his kingdom, you're going to be okay. question is, do we believe it? Do we believe it when the storms come? Do we say, hey, the virus of the crown is going to mutate. It's not going to be as powerful as it once was. Do we say that? Do we believe it? Do we have faith? Do we understand that God is actually working? Maybe all these plagues that are giving everybody a chance to finally maybe seek the meaning of life for the first time ever. And one doesn't do it, maybe another one will. And if that doesn't do it, guess what? The next one will. Because the next plague that comes is the getting rid of the firstborn. Now, that's not what you think. It's not about every literal firstborn person dying. Okay, it's not what it is. It's, it's time to destroy the lie. It's time to destroy that terrible carnal ego that has been ruled by this beast system and this beast from the beginning. Now remember, in the scriptures it talks about how the, the beast and the dragon, at one point they're at odds, right? They're going to be fighting each other. Oh, leave it alone. It's not part of you anymore. Go to the kingdom. Give to those who need it. Be kind to those who need it. Give love and forgiveness and peace and compassion and hope and faith. And do so willingly. And when people uh, slap you in the face, offer them the other side. Someone wants to take your coat, give them your hat as well. Or your really cool shirt that you wanted to wear but you thought it looked too silly. About the word of God? Are you sharing the power of the Most High and calling those things that are not as if they are so that when they are, the Lord can be revealed and people understand that it's not just the guy on the screen. It's not just Sylvia Brown who made a thing or Dean Coots. It's God that's in charge of everything. That's why everything's appearing everywhere. That's why all of this stuff is in The Simpsons and it's all pre programmed It doesn't matter. It's to show you. The signs are around you, Jesus said. He said you can discern the weather 
but you can't pay attention to the signs in the sky. I've been paying attention. I'm the guy I told you at the movie. You don't want to be at a movie with me because I'm going to tell you the end from the beginning. I'm going to say this is what's going to happen. Your life is like a motion picture, people. And right now, it's the summer blockbuster. And it's going to get crazier. And it's going to get better. And it's going to get a lot worse. I had a dream. I know, another one of those dreams. I, you know, I go outside and there are all these boxes, right? All these cardboard boxes, they're all open. There are so many boxes, but they're all open. Like people ravaged the boxes that were placed on my property. And the only thing that was left was like candy. The death of the firstborn, the death of the lie, the death of the ego, the death of those that are dead, walking dead, is about to be put down so that Israel can be set free. And it's gonna stink. I'm telling you, this new world we're entering into, it's gonna be hard. It's going to be hard, but we're going to make it. We're going to make it, right? Going into the wilderness, it stinks. You know, you're going to be like, oh, I miss sushi, which I do. I do. I do miss sushi. But do you really want to go back to that? Or do you want to go into a new land, a new promise where you don't have to worry about being taken advantage of anymore. You don't have to worry about anything anymore because you know that the spirit of the living God is alive and well in your life and in your home and that there's a sparrow's nest waiting for you on top of a pillar to remind you every time you doubt it. And guess what else is happening? After 17 years, they are not a locust, very different creatures. Actually, they shed their first skin and then they rise into the next. Here's a picture. Well, the East is going to be experiencing quite a few of them. A, com a cacophony, as, as you will, of, of really loud cicadas, June bugs, crying out, change, change, change is here. Crying out, singing out to the Lord. People are worried about famine. In Jacob's day in scripture, famine got bad. He had to send his kids into... Uh, he had to send his kids into Egypt to, you know, to get some food. But it was all meant to be. Everything's meant to be. The question is, are you storing up that? Are you storing up that treasure for yourself? Are you storing up that wheat for the harvest? Are you seeking the living God so that you, my friend, are always provided for? I am, and I hope that this show has been some kind of. Uh, I think I hope it's been an encouragement. I really hope it gets you to to, to say a prayer. You know. I'm not going to be one of those people, you know, coming on here tomorrow. Oh, we got a little 50 million uh, you know, salvations because, you know, this is not me. <laughs> you need to go to God, people. I'm just here sharing my life, sharing my journey, trying to inspire all of you because I know I can't. I can't lead nobody. Okay? Go to the source. Go to the creator of all. Go, go to the Lord. Go to the mighty one of Jacob. Go to my God. Go to the Father of Christ. Go and be set free today. And stop worrying about all the, 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 the kookiness that's happening. Because those three days of darkness, they come to an end. And just like the virus of the crown, which we're hopefully, we're, hopeful, we're hoping, we're, 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 we're speaking in faith that this is going to fizzle out. Something's going to happen. Don't know how. And you say maybe it was engineered that way, or maybe just like, you know, viruses, sometimes, sometimes they mutate. Maybe it mutates down. And that's why Italy's top doctor is saying, look, there's no, we don't have it anymore. We're going to find out in a couple of weeks, in a couple of weeks. I just hope that uh, you all remember this time when things kind of go back to a little bit of normal. And you remember that perhaps if you don't, There'll be another one, but the other one is a good one because the Christ bearer is coming to shore. I love each and every one of you. I hope you do share, subscribe, tell your friends, uh, do me a favor and, uh, you know, pass the video around, especially if you think it's helpful. I think it's helpful. I think God's speaking loud and clear. I hope people are listening. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever.